We continue to preview the 2023 college football season here on Midwest Sportsnet. Our stop today is Sioux Center, Iowa, as we visit with the head football coach for the Dort Defenders, Coach Joel Pinner, who is in his eighth season with the program. And Coach, thank you, as always, for taking time with us here on the program. Last season, 7-3, and and it was an up-and-down season for a little while. I mean, win-loss, 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 and then you rattle off four straight wins to close out the season on a winning note, which, you know, just in and of itself, uh, closing out the season on a four-game winning streak has to be good. You're one of the few teams in the country that will come in on a streak like that. But talk about your year last year to bring us up to where we are now. Well, you summarized it really well, Joey. Um, I uh, Last year was a special year because we – you know, we have a saying around here that the longer we play, the better we get. And I and I really believe that uh, if your culture is right, then you'll play your best football at the end of the year. I mean, if we're at practice every day and, and we're meeting and we're training and we're, you know, building our team, um, why wouldn't we just keep getting better, right? Um, but I've been on a lot of teams or been around teams that, that kind of peter off as the year goes on and adversity hits and then, you know, they just don't finish well we've always kind of prided ourselves on, on finishing well. And so last year was, I think, a testament to the resiliency of our players. You know, you said it, we were pretty much eliminated from postseason opportunities early and we really had to figure out what, what are we playing for at this point? And uh, we played our best football at the end. I have no doubt, um, you know, any season is going to bring injuries and, and some adversity throughout the, throughout the year. But um, as we go, we just kept getting better and, and then we just, just played hard and, I think we have a body and team, and, and that made all the difference. We had great senior leadership last year, uh, and that contributed to a strong finish, which, as you know, then really launches you into your into your winter and your spring. Uh, and we've kind of been riding that wave and just excited now to put all that hard work, uh, you know, to, to the test here in, in about a month. Well, I want to point out, too, about your schedule, too, for anyone listening, uh, of course, playing in the GPAC, which is a challenging league in and of itself. But the defenders in the last four, five years, excuse me, have won at least seven games in each of the last five years. 36 wins over a five-year stretch. Coach, there's a lot that that needs to be said about that, and I wanted to leave that on the table for, for the folks listening to be able to come into this season now. And in 2023... Uh, Cade McDaniel returns for you to camp this season. He was your leading passer, leading rusher last year as well. And he has some competition in camp. Yeah, the the, the best thing you can ever have on a football team is, is competition at, at as many positions as possible. Uh, this year, we will for sure have that. Um, three returning quarterbacks who really got about 33% of the load in our spring ball. Um, both guys were here on campus all, or all three guys were here on campus all summer. But uh, Cade's the returning starter. Uh, Colson Cruz was a young man who played a little bit last year, but was injured um, and had surgery and missed the season. And then uh, Ty Clemens uh, was a redshirt freshman last year. Uh, and so, yeah, it's it's going to be fun in camp. They're all they're all the kind of guys that are um, battling their brains out to be that guy, but they're also cheering for the other guy and it's just a really neat thing to watch um you know it sets the tone i think of competition for the entire team coach you don't have an, an august game have you started camp yet you know we reported yesterday uh so we we have our first practice we we've done our testing and our conditioning test and the the typical uh you know pre-camp type stuff is all done now and uh we'll head out to the practice field in the heat of the day for our first practice and uh, excited to get out and, and do that. Among players that are returning also along with uh, McDaniel, Nick Wellen in the backfield, Brendan Piper as well. They both uh, added to your ground game, which was for last season in particular, uh, the, the bigger part of your offense. Yeah, we, we've got a stable uh, of running backs. One of the hardest things about having a stable is, is uh, boy, we, we just want to see this guy and we want to see this guy and we want to see this guy. You know, I would throw uh, Connor Dodd's name into that mix. He saw a lot of action. He's a, uh, a diverse athlete, can do a lot of different things. Preston McCoy is, is back and he he got some playing time last year. Um, there's others as well. We, we just have a talented group of, of running backs. And, um, you know, we're, we're a, an offense that prides itself on um, – being very, very tough between the tackles. And, and so it's good to have more than one option 
you know, as the season goes on, those guys sustain some hits. And and uh, there's just a lot of guys back there we feel very comfortable getting the ball to. Coach, I like that phrase, being tough between the tackles. And I think in order to do that, you also have to have some tough tackles. I mean, <laughs> that line up front has to be able to lead the way for you. And you lose uh, an All-American left tackle in Nick Heisman, or Alex Heisman, excuse me, coming – graduating from last season. I'll get this right. And I wanted to ask who's coming back for you then to be able to lead the way there from one tackle to the other. Yeah, you bet. Um, you can't replace an Alex Heisman. He was a three-time All-American, three-time academic All-American, three-time captain, four-year starter. You know, O-linemen don't you know, normally have accolades. Uh, Alex was the exception. And he's in medical school or on his way to that now. And uh, he's going to he's gonna be great in life. Um, you know, but uh, so you can't replace that person, but but we can work hard to replace that production. And, and uh, you know, right now our replacement on the left side at tackle is a guy named Ethan Hansen, be a sophomore, played in a, in a couple of games last year. Uh, really, really uh, up for the task and uh, believe that he has what it takes to to be uh, another All-American, All-Conference all candidate uh, at left tackle. So. Uh, excited to, to have Ethan there. But, you know, the right side, uh, I should mention Parker Beck. He's coming back as a four-year starter uh, in his senior year. He's 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 been uh, played a lot of snaps for us um, and just does a great job um, leading, does a great job setting the tone for the offensive line. Um, I have a, a young man who's now in grad school who's been here. Uh, I'm losing track, but it's his sixth year at Dort. And, uh, you know, the COVID year and then a medical redshirt. Walter Black is has played left guard and also seen a lot of snaps for us. Matt Lawson is our center, uh, returning starter, and then Nate, Nate Warner is our returning starter on the right side. Um, there's some battle that, that we're going to have on the O line. That's at a few spots, but uh, by and large, there's there's a lot of guys coming back who have already played a lot of football. I enjoy talking about the the guys up front and what they do, and they don't get enough credit. I know, of course, the the numbers aren't usually there for people to see, and that's a big part of it. But uh, it's good that you have that experience coming back. We're speaking now with Coach Joel Pinner from the Dort Defenders here on Midwest Sportsnet. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Uh, Coach Ian McDonald coming back. He is and was your leading tackler from last season, a linebacker position. Let's look at the defense just a little bit. Yeah, I think it's it's probably uh, the place to start with, actually, when we're talking about this this team, nine out of 11 returning starters um, and uh, statistically a very a very tough defense last year. I think we, we've just gotten better. Uh, and so really, really excited to see our defense take the field. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of experience on the defensive line. Jessup Lakey has played a lot of snaps and, and he's going into his senior year, his fifth year senior year. Uh, Sam Andrews plays nose guard for us. Uh, if you can believe it, actually came in as a linebacker and now plays in the A gap on the defensive line. You know, weighing in at about 270 pounds and just does a great job being a tough guy in that spot. Um, and uh, just some some really good younger talent on the D line as well. Uh, you know, just like on offense, it's we we say it starts it starts up front. I, I feel the same way on defense. Um, we have to build our defense from the front back. Um, and so, but you mentioned Ian, Ian was a second team, all conference linebacker and one of our fast, fastest players on the team, uh, instinctively, um, you know, he just has a, a knack for getting to the ball, can read blocks, um, uh, can get off blocks, uh, can, can play in coverage, uh, just had an awesome year last year and, and, uh, excited to have him back. Ty Wearing is another linebacker. Uh, probably is the fastest guy on the team uh, playing linebacker for us and has a lot of great instincts. And uh, we're going to use uh, some of his speed in some creative ways this year. So uh, D line and the linebacker group is, is very solid, a lot of experience. Um, and then our back end, you know, the headline is probably our, our three safeties. We run kind of a three safety shell and Abe Stace is, is back. Uh, he, he'll be a four year starter this year. Um, Lucas Huttinga, uh, in his third year, has played a lot of snaps for us. Uh, not a lot of six, five free safeties out there that can run and move and uh, play like he Brent does. <laughs> yeah, he can he can move around. And then Dan Jungling, uh, you know, also a guy that's 
just a tough, tough, what, what you think of when you think of what, what you want in a safety, you know, a guy that can come down, a uh, Harrison Smith type uh, for the Vikings. You know, I always got to put a Vikings plug in there, but um, just, just tough on the run and then really confident to cover one-on-one uh, and it can do a variety of things. So defense is going to be good and uh, we got to keep them healthy and just let them play this year. Coach, I, and another statistic, you, know, you you talked about it being a strong defense. I always find it interesting, and I see this. It, it It's enough to be a pattern that teams that are strong with their running game also seem to have a defense that's able to shut down the run. Is there a reason to that? I mean, you guys held opponents to less than 90 rushing yards per game last season. Right. Yeah, I, I do think there is. I, I believe that, uh, you know, what are they seeing in practice Monday through Friday? They're, they're seeing a very competent run game, which forces them to, uh, I mean, they're competitors. They, they want to, they want to win in practice too. And so um, I think it's, it's a philosophy of a head coach that trickles down through a staff and that that becomes kind of a, a motto for the team um, is, you know, the way we've built our program is, is from the inside out, both sides of the ball. And so, um, it's, it's not by accident or lack of intentionality, or we got lucky that way. You know, we, we really want to win in the trenches. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously to be a championship football team, uh, you have to win in the trenches and then you have to go out and make plays in space. And we know that, and that's, that's been the evolution uh, of our team that with that both sides of the ball, we just keep, keep recruiting and developing our guys to do better at and, uh, been a major focus for us this offseason as well. You have to wait until until at least the month of September to get that first game in. I know there are a few teams playing in August, but it'll be September 2nd on the road at Doan when you get things started, a GPAC game, and you head right into conference play September the 9th and 16th, though, both at home against Mount Marty on September the 9th and Concordia on September the 16th. That's how your schedule gets underway, Coach. Can you talk about that? Yeah, we have we kind of look at our our season. You know, there's the training camp, the the two weeks before school starts, and then and then we go into a three week grind with with uh, with our openers, and uh, and then we have a bye week, um, and then after that, you know, you you make your adjustments, you heal up, and then you really buckle down for the back half of the season, and then hopefully there's a there's a postseason run for us at the end of it. But um, you know, I think all things point to being ready and, and free and fast on September 2. Um, we're going to go on the road. We're going to play in a place that's like likely going to be very hot. You know, a 1 o'clock game in Nebraska on September 2nd. And so I love that it's almost 90 out today, and we're going to get trained for that. But, um, you know, we're going to go through training camp here, and, and it's 25-ish it's or 20 practices, whatever it ends up being, before that first game. And we're going to be tired of playing each other and, and practicing. We're going to be very ready. We're playing an opponent week one who will have had a game the week before. Mm-hmm. And so uh, in all likelihood, they'll have a little jump on us in terms of, um, you know, just game experience. But uh, we, we, we understand that. We're mitigating that. We have a scrimmage versus another college opponent uh, in our training camp as well just to try to get ready and, yeah, we're going to blink, and it's going to be September, too. So we got a few things to take care of before then. Well, I'll let you get to it then, Coach. I appreciate very much you taking time with us today here on the Summit and visiting about the Defenders season, getting ready for 2023. Coach Joel Pinner with the Dort Defenders will follow you all this season as we do, and success to you all this year. Joey, I appreciate it. It's always good to talk Defender football. Thanks for having me.